Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Danica Leonard, and I'm the Policy Director for Education Evolving. Glad to be here. I will pass it to Jonathan. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Hamilton. Uh, I'm instructor at McAllister College uh, and also a part of uh, the Ethnic Studies Coalition and, and uh, Ethnic Studies uh, Education for Liberation, Minnesota. Sorry. I'll pass it on to Brian. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, my name is Brian Lazenski. I use he, him. Also, they pronouns are fine. And uh, I'm a of urban multicultural education at McAllister College and also one of the founding members of Education for Liberation Minnesota and MK. Uh, my name is MK Nguyen. I am a mama, Viet mama out here trying to survive late stage capitalism. Uh, you could find me at Nexus Community Partners, Midway Rise Up, Root Restore, Viet Solidarity and Action Network, a whole bunch of places where wild seeds are growing and they're growing beautifully. Uh, I am usually there. Uh, shout out to Jamie Carter and Sean Walsh is on the call, I see. So we are gonna get started to, um, to ground ourselves in the work that we have ahead of us. Minnesota's Department of Education just released a first draft of the state's K-12 academic standards and social studies for the next 10 years, and some of it is very concerning. They took out references to the Pledge of Allegiance, the American flag, World War I, World War II, communism, socialism, and even the Holocaust. And it gets worse. They left out the American Revolution, figures like George Washington and the Civil War, including the brave Minnesotans of the 1st Regiment who are the first to answer Lincoln's call for help. Why wouldn't we teach our kids about this? Well, because we have to make room in the standards for a different agenda, an agenda that seeks to fundamentally change the next generation's perception of America and what makes us great and unique. An agenda that includes controversial and hard to measure topics like bias, inclusion, gender marginalization and references to whiteness and persistent discrimination and inequity, an agenda that removes facts about U.S. and world history and replaces them with standards on theft of indigenous lands, renaming Minnesota landmarks, and even climate change. What's climate change got to do with social studies? The good news? It's just a first draft and changes will be made. If thousands of people submit comments to the Department of Education, the second draft will look much better. We need to raise our standards. Click here to leave a comment. Our children depend on it. All right, sorry about that. I couldn't find the unmute button. So James Baldwin tells us that the paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which they are being educated. Um, and jumping off of what um, ancestor James Baldwin um, offers us, uh, we first start shifting the paradox of our thinking, right? Around um, the name of the land, right? That we are on. Uh, I could call, I've been taught to call the land that I'm on, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, but now, um, with, with the organizing, and the education and the and the, the education and the organizing and the mobilizing that's been happen, happening, uh, my attention has shifted to center um, the names, right, of the first peoples who actually have been on this land, who have been stewarding this land, and who are who um, are offering the, us the leadership to make sure, right, that we that we as a human species stay on this land, right, and that the earth don't shiver us off. And I want to give props and credit and honor and acknowledge the Dakota and Anishinaabe people, right, the first peoples of this land. Um, and we look to their leadership and stand in solidarity for the heritage languages, language reclamation and collective return to right relationship with Mother Earth and all living relations on her. Uh, indigenous people make up, I believe, 5% uh, of the world's population, but they hold 80% of our world's linguistic and cultural diversity at the moment. Um, 
And so we look to their leadership to make sure that we have a fighting chance uh, to, and our children have a fighting chance to stay on this plan. Um, and in honoring our collective wisdom, um, we offer a set of community agreements that over time we have, um, you know, we have generated as a way to keep this space safe, brave, um, and fertile, right, for um, some good old intellectual discourse, right, to happen um, that can help us advance our collective goal of liberation, and that is to be vulnerable. And, and, and to understand that it's okay to not know, right? Um, it's okay to be curious. It's okay to summon your five-year-old yourself in you. Um, don't expect resolution. Um, when we, before we were checking in, all of us were like, man, we're tired, right? Because we're holding thousands of years of knowledge in our bodies, waiting for it to be released and find home somewhere. So don't expect resolution. If you have, you're in the wrong workshop. Um, and also there is a difference between being uncomfortable and being unsafe, right? Transformation and comfort don't live on the same block. And so, um, and, that, and that, you know, you're feeling things, which we hope you do because you're supposed to, right? Um, take a moment and, and, and notice the silence, notice the rage as Resma Menekin will tell us, right? because that's the start of building the culture and the reps necessary, right? For us to see and be and do different. Next slide, please. All right, y'all. Let me open up this chat situation because I wanna see the genius that comes out of this group. Um, we would love to ask you, um, what made you choose this session? I'm really curious. Um, I'm always looking for the people looking for us, right? So let us know. Um, actually, there's two questions. There's, we, we have options, right? Because we live in abundance here. So um, you could say, you could choose uh, why you made, why what made you come to this session? And um, what is something that you learned in school that later you found out was actually a lie, right? And you can either choose both or either or. But I'd love for that chat, make that chat rain, people. Let's see what we got. Thank you, Danika. So what made you choose this session, right? And what is something that you learned in school that later you found out was a lie? You know, and for some folks, you know, some folks are on their phones, some folks might be holding a baby. Some folks might be cooking some lunch. So if um, while people are populating the chat, you know, if you need to unmute yourself and say it, go ahead. But what we got here, we got, so I want to, you know, Ian says, I want to learn more about ethnic studies. Also something I didn't learn in school that I should have. You're right. Um, that Minnesota and Deco is Dakota homeland. Carney, uh, Kariana, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering names. I promise to do better. Um, I'm trying to find out more ways to support my teachers in their own comfortability with equity education. Alana Gates, I want to improve my student uh, centered. I want to improve my student centered teaching. Janelle Johnson, Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. That's funny, isn't it? Um, I chose Bush Foundation. I chose this session because I wanted to learn the latest on ethnic studies requirements and offerings in Minnesota. It'll show up, the last story, it'll, it might, it'll show up, but you know, we, we're gonna do what, we, what, what the ancestors call us to do in this very moment within this 45 minutes that we have. Choose Sean Walls. Sean says, choose this session to, chose this session to be in space with group, with this group to help manifest change. Lie in school, so many, dot, dot, dot. I hear you. Um, I'm, gonna t I'm gonna read a couple more. Um, so Andrea said, her ethnic studies was not available at my primary education. I learned from, inter uh, from international family. I think what I learned in my home should have been available to everyone. I wholeheartedly agree with you. And last one, Tracy. Um, as administrator and former social studies teacher, I wanna give my staff and students access to ethnic studies 
moving forward into the next year. And there is so much more, so much more. Um, thank you so much y'all for checking in, letting us know um, where your pulse is at right now. Um, I'm gonna pause real quick. I'm just one me, I'm gonna bring it to the multitude. Um, Danica, anything else to add, Jonathan? Good. All right, move forward to the next slide, y'all. All right, we're gonna do some polling, you all. Tell me this, have you ever taken um, or been required to take an ethnic studies class course during your K through 12 schooling experience? Ninety-five percent no, one percent, four percent, twenty-five, twenty-six. How many people in the chat? We got thirty-six people in the chat. We got twenty-seven people who have taken the poll. Twenty-eight people. That's 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 good, right? Some people might be hands-free, so we'll 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 close the poll. Actually, we won't because there's a timer here. Sorry. <laughs> The tech stuff I'm not so good at. Um, so y'all, yeah, 96% say no. Heart emoji if uh that resonate if that truth has resonates with what your assumptions were. All right, well, we in good company. Um Let's, let's get with it. Um, what's the next slide? Oh man, the next slide. So why are we here together? If people of color wanted to, if we wanted to, we could burn the whole world down for what we have experiencing and are, have experienced and are experiencing, but we don't. How stunningly beautiful that our sacred respect for the earth, for life is deeper than our rage. No history, no self, no history, no self, right? Remember the insurrection, y'all? Remember that? God, it feels like ages ago. Time, space, compression, Thomas Kuhn's time, that shit is so, that stuff is so real. I'm so sorry, uh, my bad. You're good. Right, right? Brother, good. Whatever comes up, comes out. We don't put our hands over our mouth. Um, remember That's the right. interaction, right? Okay, Jonathan. Um, so what conversation, so there's, there's this misconception, you know, and I, I was just listening, um, to something that, uh, I mean, when we think of when, when, when we were thinking about this workshop, one thing that I was thinking about that came up for me was James Lowen's like the lies that my teachers tell me, right. Or, uh, have told me. And, um, there was this one, I think, into uh, where he was teaching in Mississippi, he sued the school district, right? Because he said, be, uh, him and, and a crew of folks did, right? Because they were like, yo, this textbook is laden with lies, right? And, and, and the uh, excuse of one of the, um, the folks who were on uh, the school board, right? Uh, to justify their no is that, uh, to justify why they were not going to support what James Lowen and his crew was doing, right? Was that um, he used the, the example of, well, if, 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 I mean, black boys are big, right? They're big. And if they were to know, if they were to find out, or if they were to learn a history, right? And a, uh, a history that, um, that actually reflected the violence, that actually reflected what has happened to black folks, right? What, what outcomes might come of that, right? And I think about 1990s, right? Cause that's, that's the area that we grew up in. Many, the, the folks who are in this call, right? What were we before? What was that? What was that term that was dis that described black, uh, primarily black and brown boys, right? Teenagers in the '90s, y'all remember? Bonus points if you do. Remember Super Predator, y'all? That's right, Danny. You get, you get, you get props. You get props from me. That's what you get. Um, 
so super predator, right? This imagination, this lie, this myth, right? That, that um, if we don't know the truth about what has really happened, right? Um, is that we would revolt, we would, blood will be shed, right? Well, let's think about that, right? Let's interrogate that a little bit. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna go back, uh, draw us back to this, <laughs> this insurrection that happened earlier this year, right? And I'm gonna offer you a little glimpse, a little concealed story, right? Of what, a what actual conversations do happen between people who get to learn the truth via ethnic studies, right? About what has happened, what is happening to us, right? So um, the insurrection happened, a bunch of white folks, and I'm, I'm looking at time because you know I'm long-winded. So, um, but it must be remembered that the entire group of white laborers, right? While they receive a low wage, were, co uh, were compensated I got a little spec in part by a sort of public and psychological wage. While this had a small effect upon the economic situation, it had a great of, uh, effect upon their personal treatment and the deference shown to them. W. Du Bois, Black Reconstruction, right? And then um, after somebody, after one of the homies posted um, one of another homies, right, a uh, quote and 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 kind of take hot take on what was happening that day. Um, you know, we, I mean, I'll, I'll give you actually a moment to read it instead of me reading it. I'm gonna give y'all a moment to read this, right? But um, before I do, I just wanna name, right? That, remember that super predator thing, that fear, right? And check out this take, right? So when insurrection was happening, black man, right? Or black, black, black body, right? Said, we don't want to, you to shoot them like you shoot us. We want you to not shoot us the way that you don't shoot them, right? And that's a perfect, for me, I'm like, that is such a great, uh, what do you even call it? Um, a thing, right? To offer to people about this like mindset shift that we gotta get, <laughs> that we gotta get towards, right? Where um, people are really scared, right? That ethnic studies is going to make us incite riot and revolution. But look at this quote. We don't want to shoot. We don't want you to shoot them. We just don't want you to shoot us like we like you shoot them, right? And so, um, give you thirty seconds to read the rest. And let's move to the next slide. It might not have been 30 seconds, my bad. It was 30 seconds to me. And I'm facilitator, facilitator power. All right, so let's look at this. Um, I want you to join me in the chat again, right? I want you to look at the first picture, right? Um, let's have fun. Let's list out and name how many corporate, how many corporations do we, um, or how many logos, imagery, uh, memes right do you recognize let's hear it let's read it that's right jamie that is beautiful the beauty of black folks so mm -mm -mm. can't wait till that becomes just the norm of our of our society um, let's see, we got AOL, yep, Shell, Nike, Playboy, Pepsi, Atari, Marriott, Shell, well, you guys are good, General Mills, Audi, Hilton, Apple, Microsoft, I can't keep up, Toyota, Fidelity, woo, woo, damn, a paragraph, um, Honda, American Airlines, Subaru, John Deere, 2636, Taco Bell, you, y'all know your companies. Y'all know this economy really well, mm -hmm. right? Okay, next exercise, 36. Mm, Dan, you can name 36, that's crazy, right? Um, next exercise, tell me how many plant relatives you recognize. Let's hear the name. Tree. Tree, <laughs> ficus, maple leaf, black maple, 
Danny's killing it over here. Aspen, polar elm, fern. The, it's a little bit slower, the list, right? It's going a little bit slower. We got to think a little bit harder. We got to squint our eyes, just try to remember things that our grandma might have taught us, right? So a lie that I was taught when I was little is that this idea of economy was this big and it was outside of me and there was not, it was, it was so abstract, right? And little did I know later on in my thirties, after I'd done live life, right? And, and, and used and behaved and thought, right? Under whatever apparatus or framework, right? Was dominant at the moment. Um, it wasn't until later in my thirties that I learned, right? That all economy really is, is the management of home, eco, right? Oikos, Greek meaning home. Nomi, right? Management, a management of our home, right? And that when we, when we think of that in that way, right? Um, and another thing I was taught is I was taught that water, and land and soil and air, right? They were natural resources. They were things, right? That we can turn into something into, into something consumable, right? Little did I know, right? That, that, that water and soil and plant, right? And, and, um, and air, they are actually our, our relatives, right? That we are in relationship with, right? So when, I, when we look at this, right? Um, we're, and, and we look at, these two things juxtapose, or these two things juxtaposed with each, uh, uh, like alongside each other, right? And we think towards our future, right? A sustainable future, right? Where, where the human species actually gets to stay, right? With others, right? Um, is that what relationship are we gonna bank on? What relationship are we gonna count on, right? Is it the left or the right? And so that's something um, that we're gonna be thinking about and talking about today. Next slide, Carla. And so I'm gonna pass it off to my family. And the church said, amen, ashe, and so it is. MK, thank you for that amazing, amazing journey into our opening. I, um, I really enjoyed the exercises and also I, had a realization that I really don't know a lot of plant life and that has to change. And that may be one of my commitments leaving this space. So let's talk about ethnic studies. So when we talk about what that means, ethnic studies is something that fundamentally centers those who've been historically erased from mainstream curricula due to all the things like persistent racism, patriarchy, xenophobia, and linguistic imperialism. And we're, we're also gonna talk about um, the four types, types of stories. So MK had talked about a little bit about stories. And so when we talk about stories, there's four different types of stories that we have. There are stock stories. So the stories that we hear regularly, whether or not they're true. One example is um, Columbus discovered America, right? That is one stock story. A concealed story is stories that remain hidden. Um, a story about how someone may have changed the course of history um, unknowingly, but, the, but those stories are not told, or how families survived during the Middle Passage. Um, resistance stories are stories that challenge the status quo, and counter stories are the new stories, the stories that build on resistance stories and counter the stock stories. So my question to you is in the chat, share a stock story or a concealed story. And before you do that, say, this is a stock story I've heard all the time. This is a resistance story that I heard all the time. And I'm gonna call on my counterparts to share if they have any examples of concealed or resistance or counter stories as we add in the chat.
Jackie says the bootstraps there, you can pull yourself up by the bootstraps. That's all you need. You just need yourself and hard work. That's all that matters is hard work and maybe a little luck. Thank you, Jackie. Andrea says that, um, that Americans settled the West, that there was nothing there before the Americans came. Um, the story about the day Rosa Parks decided she wasn't going to move. Yep, there was a whole movement being designed behind that. Thank you, Sean. Um, fortifying the story about Rosa Parks was just tired and she wasn't giving her seat up. A stock story around women's suffrage from Miss, from Miss Liga and how that story is told. Amy says the stock story of the origin of Thanksgiving. Thank you, these are amazing stock stories. Oh, yep, and Abraham Lincoln was an amazing president. Um, he executed 38 Dakota men and also he freed the slaves. Stock police officers are heroes. That is a stock story. And then concealed story from Danny says, Asian and Asian American leadership in the last civil rights movement. Amen, amen. One concealed story that I learned growing up, I went to a camp called Camp Sunrise and we did an underground railroad um, simulation late at night. One of the things I learned that I did not learn in school were the role of the Quakers and the Chinese um, who were here building the railroads in their role in, in supporting um, the Freedom Passage. Did not know that until I grew up. I mean, until I was almost a senior in high school. Shannon says, the US is a beacon of freedom for the world. MK, we've met before. I know we have. I think MK went to Camp Sunrise. I so did, head <laughs> cook. 2002, 2003. Shout out, shout out to Camp Sunrise. Another concealed story is Sundown Towns in Minnesota. For some of you who may not know what a Sundown Town is, Sundown Town is where um, it was mainly Black people. They could not be on that side of town after dark, um, for they would likely encounter violence um, and sometimes death, but they were not welcome on that side of town. Um, we have some sundown towns in Minnesota, such as Brooklyn Center, um, Fridley, Columbia Heights. Those are, those are some former sundown towns. Okay, moving on. Oh, Denise says, uh, Minnesota nice, that Minnesota is welcoming to everyone. Um, Jonathan says, abolitionists being largely framed as white folks helping to enslave blacks. And a counter story is, Abolitionists were mostly enslaved Blacks or newly freed Blacks. Thank you, Jonathan. So when we talk about ethnic studies, we, we, want to add, we wanted to ask the students what their experiences were. Some, we have two student quotes who, um, they were able to take ethnic studies in college. And they said that, uh, they support ethnic studies because, I apologize, this is dark. As a Mexican-American student, I felt that part of my identity was being ignored. And the quote moves, it keeps going and it says, ethnic studies should be placed within social studies in Minnesota K-12 schools so that students like me do not have to wait until college to learn about how their history is impactful as well. Thank you, Ms. Barrera, who is a student at the U of M. We have another student who shared saying, I strongly support having ethnic studies as a required element of social studies standards in our K Minnesota to K-12 schools. They say in order to become an informed and positive citizen, students need to know the entire society within which they live. And it is critical that we know one another's histories. I've also heard students say that they went to college and spent a lot of money learning about themselves in their own culture and paying someone to tell them who they were and paying, and paying to learn their history. And when, so when we think about ethnic studies, 
We talk about who gets to hold the story, who gets to hold the memory, and how does that memory get shared? Poet Lucille Clifton says that they ask me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories, and I keep remembering mine. This is the struggle of ethnic studies in terms of learning it in Minnesota. We want, and the premise of the video that we showed you earlier, we are being asked to remember history a certain way, but unfortunately, we have different memories and we cannot move, we, we can no longer go forward telling the story, telling a story that is not ours and that is not true. I was uh, thinking about, um, I'm gonna make a corny reference, but the movie Trolls World Tour, where Poppy learns about um, the history of music and how, um, I think it was pop music, uh, the real story behind pop music and how pop music tried to steal the strings. And Funk says, or the Funk, I don't remember what it was called, they said, no, that's your version. That's not really what happened. And she was like, uh oh, like she was thrown off. I'm sure there's a way better way to tell that story, but I kept thinking about Trolls World Tour and how they talked about this might be your memory of what you've been told, but this is not what I've been told. This was not what was passed down to me. So when we talk about white supremacy, and I invite Brian and Jonathan to, um, to join me in this, we talk about how white supremacy dispossesses white people too. There is an abandonment of language and identity and culture and connection to ancestors. And we bring in white supremacy because we want because we want to connect it to what we're talking about in terms of the video that we sh that we showed and what it really looks like around telling the telling the story and telling the whole story. They talked about it left out um, notable um, historical figures. Well, so did so did the approach of the it left out also like patriots and revolutionary uh, white Americans like Anne McCarty Braden, William Lloyd Garrison, the young patriots of the Rainbow Coalition. So I I can jump in here too, um, Danica, and uh, again thanks everybody. It's great to see you. Um, and, you know, when we talk about stock stories, one of the prevalent stock stories that is um, has been put in as a as a barricade to the inclusion and dissemination of ethnic studies is that it's something that is primarily beneficial to uh, BIPOC folks right and and while it certainly is and we should not be <laughs> um, we should definitely be unapologetic about that. The fact of the matter is, is that it's beneficial to every single student. Because again, if we're perpetuating a lie, right, that lie continues to damage. It damages the psyche of those who have come to be called white. And if you don't know when you came to be called white, that's part of the exact problem. And, and uh, racial theory is infused in ethnic studies. It's infused in ethnic studies. So to understand uh, the ways that ethnicity functions and how race has been intertwined with, eth with ethnicity to advantage and disadvantage folks in this country in terms of theft of land and theft of labor. We also have to understand that that labor theft happened to white folks too, right? Race is an attack on poor and working class white folks in a ways that it's, a, a, in different ways it's an attack on folks of color, but a way that still, um, that still, um, uh, attacks their abilities to self-sustain. And so race becomes a pivot point for white folks to be uh, able to align themselves with elites, right? Um, and when really their class interests are much more aligned with, uh, with, with uh, people of color. And so when you start to see that, that was, and, and I like that we made those linkages across, um, you know, for instance, with the insurrection and that W.E.B. Du Bois uh, that W.B. Du Bois analysis, because when we study, again, Black Reconstruction, one of Du Bois's classic texts, the central thesis had to do with how um, whiteness as a construct was something that, um, that dispossessed white people of their own humanity and was used, uh, was used to, 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 to bring in um, poor and working class white folks into this idea that they were benefiting from a lie. Right, they were benefiting from something that that had to be created around them, 
And so ethnic studies does provide those counter narratives to, um, to position white folks as transracial, um, transracial uh, folks operating in transracial solidarity. And so that's another thing that's, that's kind of um, you know, uncovered with, with when we talk about um, you know, white supremacy, that it's not, it's not just about the benefit of folks of color, it's about the benefit of human beings to be able to understand the ways that race hurt every single one of us. We can go to the next slide. Um, and we'll talk, Jonathan's gonna talk a little more about um, the current work in terms of centering ethnic studies in Minnesota. Um, you know, we just wanna, first, first we actually do wanna, you know, say that um, this isn't, we're not asking for ethnic studies. Right, ethnic studies, it's, it's our heritage right. Colonial education is the only time that where your educational experience detaches you from your heritage and your lineage and your knowledge systems, okay? It, we could look at, we could study education worldwide over millennia and the purpose over and over again was to perpetuate and socialize young people into a system of knowledge that was about maintenance and sustainability and affirmation. Only when you start to look at colonial forms of education does that, does that disruption happen. Because in, a colon, because in a colonial arrangement, you have to have colonial subjects and, and, uh, and colonizers. And if colonial subjects had a knowledge of themselves, and colonial subjects had that, that transmission of knowledge across generations, they would not, um, you know, they would be, again, it's back to the revolt thing. They would be revolting against, against their oppression. And so we see this happening, but our educational system does not support that kind of liberatory practice. And I, I want to make sure that we, we I would touch on the, the distinction that James Baldwin makes. We started with Baldwin for a reason. He's so brilliant. Baldwin makes the distinction between justice and liberation, right? Baldwin says you can get justice on your oppressor's terms. Chauvin going to jail may have been a form of justice, but that's not liberation. Ethnic studies is about liberation. It, it, it's outside of what justice can contain. And Minnesota owes its BIPOC communities because of the historical dispossession and theft of our knowledge systems. This is not polite asking. This is coming to collect, okay? And Minnesota and the whole, the whole country will either, it will either fall apart or it will pay what it owes. There's no in-between. And so we see, the, we see the, the country collapsing around us. And if you're not paying attention, then you need to just open your eyes a little bit wider. The country will not last if it does not do right by BIPOC communities. I'll turn it over, Jonathan. Uh, thanks for that, Brian. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and uh, one of the, the, uh, the battles right now in Minnesota uh, was it, is with uh, Minnesota Department of Education. Um, one of the things that I, that I failed to mention about me when I was introducing myself is that I'm a part of uh, this year's Social Studies State Standards Committee, along with Danica and, uh, and MK. And there may be some of you uh, who are a part of this committee uh, in, in the audience as well. And, uh, uh, you know, we are, we are battling, uh, uh, demanding, uh, relentlessly uh, to get ethnic studies within uh, the social studies standards. Um, one of the things that uh, we need to understand is that Minnesota uh, revises their social studies standards every 10 years. So this committee uh, is compiled every 10 years. Uh, and, you know, I guess supposedly they go through a democratic process of appointing folks uh, on this committee, but that's not true. We, we, and we found this out uh, this year. Um, but uh, luckily this year, uh, as, as many would, would have categorized it, this year has been the, 
the most diverse uh, uh, members of the Social Studies State Standards Committee uh, in the state of Minnesota. And, and we're happy to be a part of that. Uh, however, there's been a lot of, uh, of battling around ethnic studies within this committee, uh, within uh, and, 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 and against uh, Minnesota Department of Education. Right now, uh, one of the, the key issues that we are uh, articulating and demanding is that we want uh, ethnic studies as a fifth strand uh, and also to embed ethnic studies in, in the four existing strands. And, I, and I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that. Uh, so the social studies is made up of four strands right now, and that is history, geography, economics, uh, and then they have citizenship and government uh, lumped in together. And, and we're demanding that ethnic studies should be a fifth strand, a fifth additional strand, right? Uh, and we feel like that's important just to showcase the legitimacy of ethnic studies, but also to make sure that uh, schools and school districts, uh, students, teachers know that, hey, this is a... Uh, uh, a major, a major uh, strand, a major, it, it should be legitimate, size as a major strand, uh, along with these other four existing strands. Uh, and right now, uh, we, we came up, uh, October 22nd, the Standards Committee uh, came to a vote uh, where uh, uh, over 90% of the committee members voted to either include ethnic studies as a fifth strand in the social studies standards and or to embed it into all the existing uh, social studies strands. Uh, and the, the majority of the committee agreed to this. And right now we're seeing uh, resistance. We're seeing pushback by Minnesota Department of Education not honoring this vote that the committee came uh, to, right? Uh, also, we're seeing resistance. I know at the beginning of, uh, uh, of this presentation, uh, the American experiment, we're, we're seeing uh, resistance aimed at, as I said, this has been the most uh, diverse uh, committee. It's, it's not overwhelmingly, but sadly enough, this is the most diverse committee that uh, the social studies uh, in the state of Minnesota has, has assembled. And we're seeing resistance pushed back uh, by uh, by organizations throughout uh, the state of Minnesota, aimed at uh, uh, some of the folks of color, indigenous folks that are that are representing on this committee, and, and so we are we are uh, representing. We are trying to stay true and honor the uh, our our communities uh, and what they are wanting, what what our students are wanting, and what they are demanding. And that's ethnic studies, and so we're bringing that to to the committee. And um, the, the standards are, are basically uh, the guidelines and benchmarks in K-12 schools um, that basically tells us what, what should be taught, uh, what to be assessed, and how teachers are to be trained. And um, there's, I'm trying to break it down in terms of uh, anchor standards and uh, uh, common core state standards. Uh, and, and right now, uh, we are trying to uh, embed ethnic studies uh, everywhere within the standards process. And, and that's where the, the pushback uh, is right now. And, and, and to be quite honest with you, uh, we're not sure if, if, if even though we came to a vote as a whole committee to doing this, uh, we're in limbo right now. We're not, we're not certain if uh, the new commissioner, Commissioner uh, Mueller, will honor this vote. Basically, we are being told uh, that they won't, right? Uh, so we, we do need all of you in the audience and elsewhere to, uh, to help uh, push this and demand uh, Minnesota Department of Education to honor the vote uh, for, for our students, uh, all, all students in the state of Minnesota. Uh, it is not just enough to embed uh, ethnic studies. It, it, adding a fifth strand as to the, the legitimacy uh, of, of ethnic studies. Uh, and also, it makes sure that uh, it, it holds as a framework for the other strands, right? Uh, 
you know, this is a uh, ethnic studies is should be a, a, a way to examine and 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 build and critique and revise uh, this whole process, uh, this whole standards process, uh, and all the other existing standards and strands, and and, and that's why it's so powerful and, and, and needed. Um, so one of the other things I want to say is that the, the committee is comprised of educational and community stakeholders. So, so this is an important uh, endeavor, uh, a important committee. Uh, I would advise all of you uh, who are definitely, who are, who are advocates of ethnic studies to uh, be a part of uh, this process. Uh, and also to uh, every 10 years, I would apply for, um, uh, represent, representation on this committee. Uh, this is a very uh, political uh, endeavor, even though it's being framed uh, by administrators at MDE that it's not political. Uh, but as Brian already shared, this colonial project has always been political, even though uh, they don't want to view it as such. Uh, so this is, uh, this is where things are, 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 where the rubber meets the road. Uh, we are trying to infuse ethnic studies uh, in this process, and uh, and as of right now, there's a, a lot of uh, pushback. Uh, there are some some strides in, in embedding it into the standards, uh, but but we're not getting everything that 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 in which we voted uh, is not being honored. Um, we are having growing support. Uh, of, of, of co-conspirators and organizations throughout Minnesota, um, uh, you know, organizations like uh, let me see if I can even remember. Education evolving is definitely uh, is definitely one of them. Uh, Voices for Racial Justice, St. Paul Neighborhood Promise, uh, 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 Education for Liberation, Cal Coalition of Asian American Leaders, uh, Navigate. Uh, so th there are organizations that are. Uh, in support and, and, um, and conspiring to, to help push ethnic studies within the state standards process. Uh, and we need more of you to help out, all right? I'm putting a document in the chat that's uh, if folks want to sign up to be connected to the Minnesota Ethnic Studies Coalition, please put your information into the document. Um, uh, the the coalition is a BIPOC led coalition. So if your organization is um, is is BIPOC led, um, you know definitely feel free to um, to engage with us. If you're a white led organization, we would just su suggest that you um, engage with the coalition in a supportive role um, and recognize that we're a BIPOC led coalition. I believe Brian and Jonathan, this is your slide to share. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> also, you know, we 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 do want to um, acknowledge. You know, it's 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 always it always is hilarious to me when um, educational organizations and institutions that continue to perpetuate a white supremacist project of education call themselves evidence based or rely on evidence. Um, I was joking with my colleagues earlier. I, I wore my decolonizing knowledge T-shirt today that uh, that comes from an organization called the Data Center, uh, which was a community participatory uh, evidence gathering organization um, that was actually defunded about five years ago. So, so we do know how to defund certain things. But um, so uh, there is a there is a strong evidence base for ethnic studies. Um, and the evidence, you know, interestingly, like I keep saying like the evidence base for uh, that's being used to justify not having, uh, not diversifying curriculum, not um, bringing in and, and centering perspectives of BIPOC communities continues to fail. They, they don't even realize and read their own evidence. Their evidence just shows that it continues to benefit um, middle and upper class white students. And so the evidence that actually shows what works for indigenous communities and communities of color just as completely gets ignored. And so there is a strong evidence base um, <clears throat> starting with 
uh, the, the foundational study by Christine Sleeter in 2011, um, showing the, um, the, uh, both the material and psychological benefits of engaging in ethnic studies. Um, uh, there is a, a 2017 study out of the Canada Journal of Public Health talk showing that um, ethnic studies uh, was positive in suicide prevention, particularly for indigenous youth. Um, Cabrera and others published in the American Educational Research Journal in 2014 showing ethnic studies increased school attendance, improved academic outcomes and graduation rates. And even the and even if we want to look at standardized test scores, which I think is a really terrible marker of anything, um, that ethnic studies actually did re result in an increase in standardized, standardized test scores because of a, an affirmative school environment. Um, also, Lee in 2005 showed that ethnic studies resulted in a protective buffering in response to depression and sense of social disconnected due to disconnection due to discrimination. Um, so, and, and we have other studies and um, at least, you know, I, well, I won't show all of them, but <laughs> that, that show the various health benefits um, and, and psychological benefits of engaging in ethnic studies. Um, so there is actually quite a lot of, of evidence. But again, do, does our state care about the mental health of its students or does it just care about their um, ability to be future workers? And I think this is, gets back to MK's point uh, you know, in the comparison of how we all knew uh, all of those corporation logos and very few of the plant uh, in, in fauna. So I'm going to go here around our approach. Um, MK, did you wanna go on this one quickly? Most definitely. So these are the, um, we only have a few minutes and so I'll give you I won't go into details, but these are principles that we can apply to anything that we do, right? When we are prepared to govern, we are prepared to win, right? What we pay attention to grows. So it's very critical that whatever your heart, whatever the troll, like the troll movie, right? If your heart beat is beating to that beat, do that, right? And do that well and prepare to pay attention to that th note of knowledge, right? While you trust the multitude, right, to do the same, and that the deeper we reach, or no, the, the deeper we go, the wider we will reach, we will find each other there, right? Um, so uh, if it's the right work, we have every right to do it. And Jonathan, you know what, I'm just gonna say, why don't I just say the principle, and then maybe you wanna, do you wanna touch on the specifics of the social science standards and for, in the minutes that we have, because we got to cut off at like two right away, right? There's call to action. So why not? Is it okay if I can read the principles? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, cool. If it's the right, if it's the right work, we have every right to do it, right? Uh, white supremacist, capitalist, heteropatriarchal, uh, instant, uh, ba you know, dominated or based institutions, right? They will, they will try to figure out ways to limit your movement, right? And so. We have if it's if it feels like the right thing to do, right? It, it's probably the right thing to do, and you have every right to do it. And if it is soulful, it is strategic. Um, and that the heart learns what the hands do. Experiment, experiment, test, try, fail, you know, learn. But like now is the time to speak up, right? And now is the time to do things, right? There's plenty of work to do. Um and we also want to name, Dan, you can let me just take this. Okay, um, so there's about six conditions for systems change that uh, folks have been able to synthesize, right? Uh, we, we usually start with change equates to policies, practices, and resource flow, right? That's our first orientation. It's actually a flip, right? The best thing that you could do, the most sacred thing you can do right now, right, is to take on that responsibility of working on yourself. Right, the deeper we go, the wider we will reach. Right, mental model shifting. Right, we got to cheat, uh, change the way we treat, eat, and, and eat, live, and treat each other. Tupac, um, so many other folks who we can't. I, I don't have enough time, but mental model shifting. Right, the deepest and most transformative change that you can make, and the most invisible, and the most 
right? The, the stuff you do in your home, reconstruct your insides, commit to that, right? So that you can show up different. You can show up in a way, right? That's gonna advance the way that we should be relating, connecting, the way power should work and the way policies, practices and resource flow will look like. Calls to action. Danika? All right, so we ask ourselves, what are we prepared to do? And I'm going to zip through these because I really want to go to the end to ask everyone um, who has um, convened with us today. Uh, MK also shared a lot of these, but the Zen Education Project has a pledge to teach the truth, um, to refuse to lie to young people about US history and current events, regardless of the law. We talked about using your sphere of influence to support district schools and classroom efforts around ethnic studies. Um, review and share the resources in this slide deck. One of the things that we agreed upon as uh, presenters um, when, we, when we started to design our presentation was that we were not going to present you with an abundance of research to try to prove yet again the benefits of ethnic studies. What we were going to do was give you the information for everyone who's interested to go and look for it. We, we were able to give you a roadmap. Other things you can do is email Commissioner Mueller asking her to openly support and champion ethnic studies, join the Minnesota Ethnic Studies Coalition, get your institutions, unions, association boards, groups involved to push for a fifth strand. You can also be a part of the Ethnic Studies Literature Drop uh, this coming Thursday at 6.30. And lastly, so in the chat before you go, we'd like to ask, what is one thing you will do to support ethnic studies in Minnesota? So if there's something you'd like to offer that you will do, we'd like you to share it in the chat. Daniel says that they're going to email Commissioner Mueller. Ms. Liga says call. Carly says demand the commissioner to honor the vote to start with. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Send cards and emails from her, from Sean's house to and workplace to Commissioner Mueller. Email the commissioners. Write a letter to the legislatures. Janelle said about to email Commissioner <laughs> Mueller. Thank you, Janelle. Carly says teach the truth. A few more. Danny says that she's not all clear, but she'll take all the action steps and get familiar with the resources. Also share, with, uh, share what she's learned uh, with her organization. And then last but not least, Marcy says uh, support efforts in her district and also email the commissioner. Thank you. So in this PowerPoint that we will be sharing um, are our names and content information, but there will be a bevy of resources for um, everyone who is interested to take a look at. We wanted to make sure that you were well equipped with, uh, with what was needed. Thank you so much, Brian, MK, Danica, Jonathan. That was phenomenal. Um, I'm so glad that this was recorded because I feel like I need to watch this two or three times to like absorb all of that brilliance. Um, but thank you truly. And thank you everyone gathered here today. Um, yeah, peace everyone. We have two more sets of sessions today and a full day of sessions tomorrow and our closing plenary on Thursday. See you soon. <laughs>